Hi guys, so it's my first YouTube video. Um, I'm back. I haven't been on YouTube in a while, as you can see. Different car for all my YouTube people. So the reason I'm back is because of TikTok. So I have started doing a lot more car stuff on TikTok. This game quite a big following or quite a is it anyway people are interested in so what I've decided now is I'm gonna start doing more long-form YouTube videos I've asked people what they want to see and they've given me a list of kind of things so expect um, Not car reviews, but like just daily car stuff and how it is to use them For example this Hurricane Evo that is a courtesy car because my SVJ is in the workshop I've been daily driving this for the last two weeks and I've actually found it perfectly fine as a daily driver So I'm gonna do something on that later on maybe the next video for you But this video I want to talk about some of the things I've been doing since I was last on YouTube I think my last video was me picking up my Hurricane Performante and then I was like oh, YouTube's long man I can't really be able to do this. However, a lot of things have changed in my life since then I got married and I started like buying like several cars collecting cars So the plan is to fill out my uh, drive with just tons of cars <laughs> and um, yeah enjoy them drive them show them to you guys explain bits and bobs about them answer any questions you have and also I'll be ordering a bunch of new cars as well which I already done so in this video what I want to show you is my new car that's coming in December so it's the next car I've got arriving and it is a Porsche Cayenne Turbo GT so we're gonna go inside I'm gonna get on my computer I'm gonna do some wizardry and you'll see my computer but also see me at the same time and I'm gonna go through my spec sheet with you, talk about the car with you, what I'm most excited about, and yeah, I guess just, you know, share my positive car vibes with everyone. I love cars, like, that's like my main passion in life. So to be able to share it with other people, it really makes me happy, especially like on TikTok where I see people writing such cool things and asking questions and saying it inspires them. That means a lot to me, and you know, that's what I wanna do, inspire others and yeah help everyone elevate <laughs> but okay here we go I'm gonna walk inside and we're gonna get started sorry if this seems really off the cuff it is off the cuff I'm just literally picked up my camera right now I was like let me start doing this so yeah so first things first let me talk about the Porsche Cayenne Turbo GT and the reason I'm getting that car the Turbo GT is a faster version of the Cayenne Turbo Lamborghini made the Urus and got the Nürburgring track record for a SUV around there Porsche said being Porsche, they, we can't let that run. Like we invented this segment of a sporty SUV. So they went back to the drawing board, they got a Cayenne, said, we're not gonna do any of the hybrid stuff because it just weighs the car down too much. Instead, what we're gonna do is we're gonna upgrade a Cayenne Turbo and just make it a, an Urus killer. And that's pretty much what they've done. So the Cayenne Turbo GT has a boost in horsepower, 631 horsepower, the Urus has 640. So they didn't, they didn't outdo the Urus, obviously because it's a sister company, but it's probably just in the stats. The car probably does put out more horsepower. Um, it got a 738 at the Nürburgring, so that's 11 seconds faster than the Lamborghini Urus, which is incredible. The car now weighs 2,200 kilograms. It's still very heavy, but it's a lot lighter or a few kg lighter than the regular Cayenne. Um, they've included stiffer suspension, retuned rear wheel steering, water cooled transfer case, titanium exhaust to save weight, and new crankshaft, new rods, um, new pistons, new timing chain, and a new engine damper system. So, all in all, they've gone out, they said, We're going to make this the best car possible, and we're just going to knock everyone out of the water. So, that's why I'm super interested in this car, and even from the day they released, their preview video of it, they used the Gran Turismo sounds, I was like, yeah, I want this car. So um, I was chilling one day, relaxing. Um, again, on YouTube, you guys don't know yet, but I have a few Porsches on order. So I have a Taycan GTS that's arriving in December, and I have a 911 Carrera 4 GTS Cabriolet that's also supposed to be arriving in December. So I ordered the two cars. I have a great relationship with my Porsche dealer, Porsche Swindon and I was expecting those cars. So I was just chilling at home one day and I've always thought to myself, oh, wouldn't it be awesome if they offered me a GT car? But obviously I've got a relationship with them, but I haven't bought that many cars from them. So I thought it's gonna be a few years until that happens. So again, I was at home chilling one day, my Porsche dealer calls me and then I answer the phone and he's like, oh, I've got good news and I've got bad news for you. And I was like, oh, damn. I wonder what the bad news is going to be and I wonder what the good news is going to be. So I was like, you know what, just give me, give me the news. Give, let me know what it is. So he said, Tommy, the bad news is your 911 Carrera 4 GTS Cabriolet. He didn't say it like that, but I'm just explaining. He said, your Carrera 4 GTS Cabriolet has been delayed until February because of a backlog at the factory. So I was like, 
yeah, that's cool with me. I haven't got any issue. Um, I said, when would I get the car? And he said, well, they'll, they'll produce it in February. It should be finished. So around March. So I didn't see that as bad news because when the car does come in March, that means we'll have the latest registration, the 23 registration. So, I mean, it's not, that's not really a big deal. So I was like, you know what? It's fine. I'll be fine with that car until March anyway. I'd like having a convertible in December wouldn't have really done much to my life anyway. But my GTS is still on track for my Taycan GTS. So that's good. And then he said, okay, now for the good news. And I said, okay, what is it? And he literally just said this, Turbo GT. I was on the phone. I was like, I just said, I'll take it. I didn't even ask any questions. Didn't ask if it was new, if it was used or whatever. In the, in the, in the excitement of the situation, I just said, I'll take it. He said, awesome. It's a new car. You get to spec up. It'll arrive at the end of the year and you should be able to drive around in winter and enjoy it and whatever. And in my head, I'm thinking, drive around in winter? I'm going to drive around forever in this car. But yeah, I was really excited about it. And then I was like, yeah, I'll take the order. Now let's do it. So I'm specking the car now and I want you guys to join me as I spec the car. Um, usually on my TikTok, I normally ask people for opinions, but with a car this special, I was like, nah, I'm just going to do it exactly how I want it. And I know, well, I have an idea how I want it. I've already been to Porsche and they have the spec that I initially have. So I'm going to show you it now. So here we go. I'm going to start customizing. I'm really excited about this. So here's a um, Cayenne Turbo GT. This one is in white. All the press material of the car is in the amazing Arctic grey colour. That's the colour I fell in love with when I first saw the car. And with the Neodyne wheels. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep it with the, like, the press spec, the launch spec of the car. Um, two reasons, because I love it. And two, that's going to do really well with resale values in the future. Because this car will be a future classic. So whether I keep it for six months, a year, ten years, whatever. I feel like this is the, the colour scheme to go for. Um, the interior, I am going to go for in the interior. So right now... In the interior, it's um, Porsche call it race text. It's Alcantara or Alcantara. I always mispronounce it, so I'm just making sure. So yeah, they normally go with um, the leather interior, but in this car, it's an Alcantara interior. It's Alcantara and then Arctic Grey. However, I have chosen to do Alcantara and Neodyne, just to add a little bit of colour to the interior. So you get Turbo GT highlighted. Um, the centre of the seats have Neodyne, and then the seat belts are in Neodyne as well. And I, th I think that looks really good. So yeah, with seats, I wanted to choose adaptive sports seats. So when I click on them, you see that you can't choose adaptive sports seats and then have the Alcantara interior. Now, let me explain why. So originally, the, the adaptive sports seats were a zero pound option. They were a free option. And Porsche left it out to save weight in the car. I think they saved a total of about 8 kg taking out the side bolsters and whatnot. So it was a free option that anyone can choose. However, they recently changed it so that if you choose it, you have to have a leather interior. And I have, I have a conspiracy theory about this. I think what they're doing is that everyone knows there's a chip shortage around the world, a semiconductor shortage. So in order to stop people from getting options that require more chips, they're trying to force people to the lesser ones. So if you do click on something that requires more chips, you then have to sacrifice what the essence of the car is, so the Alcantara interior. So unfortunately, I can't get adaptive sports seats. I'm just going to get the eight-way regular adjust. So up, down, front, back, tilt. That's all this. The adjust that's going to be there, which is annoying, but it is what it is. Um, seat sitting, going to leave all that all the same. Exterior. So originally, I wanted my door handles. I'll show you against uh, oops against a white background so you can have a better idea originally i wanted my door handles painted in black however i was speaking to my friend ish when i was specking it at porsche swindon and then i realized that i should probably just get them regular because if i want them in black i could just wrap them whereas if i get them in black i can't paint them back to the regular one like i could but it'll just be too much hassle so i'm just going to get them with the regular door handles porsche led courtesy lights i mean I have to have that. I have it on my tie cad and I've spec'd it on all my other Porsches. So I'm just going to go for it now. And it's only £203 and it comes to the ambient lighting on the interior, which I would have got anyway. Um, model destination on doors. So it's going to show a little sign on the door about the car. So I'm going to get a neodyme and you can see it right there in the corner. Just a little hint. A little nice subtle detail says Turbo GT. I think that looks really cool. Uh, and you can peel it off if you don't like it because it is inevitably just a sticker. Um, what else do I want on the outside? Uh, decorative side, no, no. Exclusive design filler cap. 
I mean, when you're paying upwards of 150 grand for a car, what's another 93 RA? Fuel filler cap, so I've chosen that. Drivetrain and chassis. So this car comes with all of the drivetrain option, drivetrain and chassis options included for free. So it comes with carbon ceramic brakes. It comes with rear wheel steering that's been calibrated specifically for this car and specifically for the larger 22 inch rims that are available on this car. The rims are also one inch wider. The tires are also one inch wider and it runs on Pirelli P0 courses, which none of the other cans run on. So yeah, it comes with that uh, rear wheel steering that's been calibrated for the car again. It also comes with PDCC, which is Porsche Dynamic Chassis Control. So when you go around the corner, cars normally bend, especially cars with high sense of gravity like um, SUVs. So what the Dynamic Chassis Control does is that there's a motor on each of the, um, uh, gosh, my brain has gone blank. So what the PDCC does is that there's a motor on the front axle and the rear axle of the car, or stabilizer, I should say. No, there's a word, I can't remember what it is. Anyway, there's a motor that then twists the body back so that it stays flat through corners and absorbs shocks um, more um, compliantly or goes over them more compliantly. Um, and then it also, the car finally also comes with um, the Porsche Torque Vector in Plus, which is the rear differential. And then it also has the virtual um, torque vector on this car, which breaks wheels depending on where you need power to go. So yeah, it comes with all those. And then all you can do is make the um, brakes black. I don't want them in black. I think yellow can kind of clash, but I think because they're composite, so carbon ceramic brakes, yellow is normally the signifier for that. So I'm just going to leave it at that. And if it looks really not that nice in real life, I'll just paint it black. If I really want to, I think I'll just leave it the same. In terms of lights, um, non-cost option a lot of the options are non-cost and i think that's just because it's the value of the car and it's like a special model um led matrix lights are non-cost options i'm going to get the tinted ones which are 333 pounds and i'll show you what they look like so yeah i think they look pretty sick so i'm going to get those um the rear light strip has hints of red but you can get it tinted for 590 that sounds like a lot and it is a lot but I have to get it. I'm gonna get privacy glass as well for some tint on the back just to make the car look a bit cooler. I would normally get acoustically insulated and laminated privacy glass which stops UV rays from penetrating the car and then it also, um, it also stops sound from coming into the car or too much sound. But I'm not gonna get that because this is the kind of car you want to hear, especially with the exhaust on this car. Um, it's a titanium and exhaust system and they've retuned it and they've taken out the rear silencer so it sounds a lot more aggressive and a lot louder than the regular Cayenne Turbo. Heated windscreen, uh, do, did I option it? Do I need that? Yeah, why not? 360 pounds or 336 pounds, not a big deal. Heads up display, you're gonna need that in this car because you're not gonna have time to be good at this. Right in front of you is gonna be good. Park assist, including surround view, awesome. Gives you a surround view of the car. Um, and helps you to not curve the rails when you're parking and stuff. So I think that's essential. Remote park assist. So this is a really cool thing. You can basically get out the car, press a button, it'll park itself. However, the Porsche app is a bit finicky in this early stages. And I don't think I'll bother getting it because the time it takes to load all that, I could have just done it myself. So I'll save myself 900 pounds in that situation. Night view assist, I was gonna get it again, but it's not really necessary. It's more like um, infrared in a sense or heat um, vision. So it usually uses a thermal camera to pick out objects, highlight them on the screen, but it's not necessary. Lane change assist, that's very necessary. So in the mirrors, it'll tell you if there's something in your blind spot. Um, so this is another thing that Porsche can't let you do. So I tried to do inner drive, which is Porsche's like self-driving system. And when you do inner drive, it gets rid of the bespoke um, Cayenne Turbo GT wheel in Alcantara with the gold marker on it. And it forces you to get a leather one. So I've chosen not to get that because I feel like that is part of the essence of the car. So I'm just gonna get a regular adaptive cruise control with start, stop, emergency function and lane keep assist with speed limit indicator. That was a mouthful. Home link, need that. I've got a gate in my house, got a garage. So I can just press the button and open those things. Comfort access, I never spec in my car. It makes it really easy for people to steal your cars. I think they even write it here, note. Yeah, they do. Note, the Comfort Access uses state-of-the-art technology, however, it cannot be completely ruled out that keys wireless encryption code is intercepted and used to open and steal the vehicle. So they're letting people know. And I also expect soft-closed doors because it's really annoying when people get out of my car and they don't close the door properly. I wish I had that on the G-Wagon because that happens all the time on that car. Ionizer, might as well, keeps the interior pure for the occupants. 
Um, seat ventilation doesn't, you can't option that unless you get leather seats, unfortunately. And I don't want leather seats, I want the Alcantara. So I'm not getting that. Exclusive design gear selector is literally the same thing, just a bit different. I'm not gonna bother that. Four zone climate control, again, not gonna bother that. I don't care about the people in the back wanting their particular seat in a particular temperature. <laughs> um, uh, what, what did I click on just then? Cancel that. Um, I don't need any of these things really. Auxiliary heating with remote control, a thousand pounds for that, no thank you. Um, electric roll up sun blinds, I was considering getting this, so basically sun, sun blinds come out the door and roll up, but don't really need it. Um, graphite blue seat belts, so the seat belts are already near dime, so I don't need to pick another option for that. I want the instrument dial in near dime though, I think that'll look really cool. So. Let me see. I hate that it always goes to the outside view. So yeah, this is near done. I think that looks good. Um, but just got a message there. Can't see it. <laughs> um, Sport Prono. So this um, center clock in near dime. I will also get that. And let's see what that looks like. Yeah, I think that looks fire. I'm saying I think that looks fire. Or I already know because I've done this a thousand times and I've actually sent it to Porsche already. <laughs> um, side airbags in rear. Don't really need that. Um, they're more for adults, and I never really carry adults in the rear. Loads management system, doesn't look that good, so I'm not optioning that. Interior leather, not having uh, leather interior, so don't need it. Interior Alcantara, I don't need the roof grab handles in Alcantara for 500 pounds. Those handles, uh, it's not worth it to me. And the vehicle key in Alcantara for 261, doesn't make sense. The car comes with carbon interior kit already, so there's nothing really to spec here. And I don't want carbon floor mats, that's kind of ridiculous. Aluminium stuff overrides the carbon stuff, so not getting any of that. Um, audio communication, so I actually prefer the Bose sound system. I prefer how it sounds. I think it's more fitting to dance music and hip hop, which I listen to the most. However, a car like this, when you're going all out, you might as well just stick on the Burmeister. So going full Burmeister on this one, I've got Burmeister in the, or Burmeister, I always say Burmeister. I've got full Burmeister in my G-Wagon, it's really good. It's not as good as the boats from my Taycan, I feel. So, yeah, but you know what? You just have to. Whoever's gonna buy this car for me in the future is probably gonna want it in there anyway. And I originally was gonna get um, rear seat entertainment, so screens in the rear. However, for 1,300 pounds for some iPads stuck in the rear, I wasn't quite sure. And I was thinking, oh, in the future when I have kids, they might wanna use it, but by that time, will I still have the car? And you know, is it really that important? So I've opted not to take the screens in the rear. You can't actually even see them, but there's a little bit of them there. Um, this is what they look like. I think they look cool and you can watch Netflix and stuff on it. But again, I'm not gonna take it. But instead, I'm getting preparation for rear seat entertainment just in case in the future I wanna get the tabs and put them in. But yeah, this is pretty much the spec of my Cayenne Turbo GT. Um, it came to 163,000. I originally wanted to spend 160, but I don't really mind. And let me show you why I don't mind because if I look now at reselling prices, the car is selling now for 250,000 pounds. So there's a healthy profit to be made there. <laughs> but I'm not sure, again, I'm not sure how long I'm going to keep the car from for um, my friends talking about ordering some Urises. So yeah, basically I'm, I ordered some mirrors as well, but they come later anyway, so they don't clash. I'll explain that another time. Um, so yeah, they're reselling for in the 200s, so it's a no-brainer. I've optioned it well. I think it's a very desirable option I've chosen, um, uh, spec I've chosen. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to it, and I hope you guys love it. If you have any opinions and suggestions, leave them down below. I do this on my TikTok as well, so follow me on TikTok. It's Tommy Music, even though I mostly post car stuff. And on here, Tommy Auto. But yeah, I'm glad you could join me for my first YouTube video back in like the YouTube world. Um, I hope it wasn't too boring and I'll see you next time. I'm gonna do a video about daily driving my courtesy car, Lamborghini Evo, next. And I hope you look forward to it. Peace.